Welcome to episode one of making Photoshop actions. So with Photoshop actions, we can basically do just about anything. And that's what's so great about it because it's so amazing the things that we can do with Photoshop actions. Like literally I'm geeking out right now because <laughs> I love making Photoshop actions. It's, it's like one of my favorite things to do. So what we're going to be doing is making an action that blends an ambient exposure with the underlying flash exposure or exposures if you're using multiple flash frames. And we're going to be doing this so it's customizable, easy to edit, and super easy on you. So let's go ahead and start by getting our actions panel up and opened. So what we need to do is go to window and whoops, window and go down to where it says actions and make sure that is uh, checked. So when it's checked, it's going to open up on either your uh, right side or your left side, depending on how your workspace is. So now what we want to do is now that we're in the actions panel, we need to make a folder. So let's go ahead and make a folder. We need to go down here with the third icon from the right. Yeah, from the right. And we need to click that and it's going to say, okay, you're making a new set. Let's give it a name. So we're going to call this uh, making Photoshop action set. So we have now a folder for all of our actions. Let's go ahead and click on this little, it looks like a paper, I guess is what it is, or like a new layer button, but it basically means just create a new action. So let's go ahead and click this button right here. And we are making a new action, so we need to give it a name, make sure it's in our folder, and we can also apply shortcut keys to it and a color if you're using um, if you're using this in button mode. So I'm gonna call this uh, auto blend ambient exposure. So we're gonna call that auto blend ambient exposure, make sure it's in our making Photoshop action set function key. I'm gonna say function one and hit shift and command just so the the um what is it just 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 just, just so that it's not taking up a spot in our keyboard shortcuts and we're going to give it a color we're going to call this i don't know red i like red and we're going to hit record so now we're recording our action so anything we do is going to be recorded in our action set so what i like to do first with all of my actions is I like to duplicate the, the original layer and turn it off just so the user is able to revert back to the original state they were in without having to go command Z or command shift Z. I can't remember and having to go back to all their history states. So this is an easier way to do it. So let's go ahead and use keyboard shortcuts to duplicate this layer. So I have my ambient layer selected. We're going to hit, we're going to hold down command and then hit J. That's going to make a duplicate copy of your selected layer. And now we want, and now what we want to do is turn, well, actually let's uh, rename this layer. So we're going to call this ambient exposure luminosity if I can spell luminosity Lum luminosity okay there we go spelling was hard for me and we're gonna call that that and we can always stop the action and rename this and it'll save that change so I'm gonna keep it the way it is select the last uh, his not history set the last step in the action click record and now what we want to do is, is we're gonna give it a color so I'm gonna call this orange I always make all my actions orange just so the user is able to figure out okay these are the generated actions layers 
that basically can be deleted or modified or anything like that. So now what we want to do is turn off this layer right here, but we don't want to just click this button. We don't want to do that because that's going to record that action in our action. It's going to record this layer name and break the action for using it with different images. So let me show you what that does. See this? It says hide layer DSC blah, 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 dot ARW. That's a, this is making a specific action. We don't want that. We want our action to be non-specific. We want it to be able to work with multiple images. So having it being specific like this is just not, it's, it's no, no good. So we need to just delete this. So let's drag that into our trash bin and we're going to turn that back on. So we need to get to this layer and we need to do it in a way that is not going to record the name. So the easiest way to do it is hold down option or alt and then click on your, or not click, hold down your left bracket key. That's going to go to the backward layer, basically the bottom layer and doing the command or not command doing um, option right bracket will get you back to the original layer. It'll just basically take you up and down a layer. So let's go ahead and turn the visibility off and then go option right bracket to get back to our forward layer. And now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure this is set to luminosity. So we're going to go down here, set that to luminosity. And we want to basically have a more customizable approach because most of the time I like what luminosity does for the colors in the midtones, but for some colors in the shadows and the highlights, I don't like it not, uh, that much. So we're going to duplicate this ambient exposure layer, command J, that's going to make a copy. And we're going to call this ambient exposure color. And we're going to make this uh, invisible. So we need to make, go ahead and make a mask out of this. So we're going to add a layer mask. And then we're going to hit command. I to invert because we don't want this layer visible. Select the thumbnail of the action and change the blend mode to color. So this is basically making it into the original color of the, uh, the ambient exposure without any of the brightness. So it's only taking color. So now what we can do is make that orange. And now I want to put a repair layer in here. So basically what a repair layer is, is uh, it's basically allows you to paint in a selected color that you uh, basically pick with your eyedropper tool and just paint in wherever you want. So if I wanted to make this white, I can select with the option key, I'm sorry, brush tool, make sure we have that. I can select a color here and then just paint it, but we need a new layer first. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and make a new layer right here with this button next to the uh, trash bin. I'm going to make a new layer. We're going to call this ambient, uh, ambient repair layer. So let's call, let's call that ambient repair layer. And we are going to give it a mask just in case we need to brush out anything. So let's go ahead and select the thumbnail and the thumbnail is just this blank uh, canvas right here. And we're going to call this orange. So now we have all of our layers together. We need to now group them so we can easily modify the group. Because if we do everything 
to each individual layer. It's just going to get complex and frankly obnoxious. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. So click on this, uh, new, um, sorry, create a new group. And that's one, two, three, three from the right. It's create this new group. It's just this folder uh, button right here. We're going to call this uh, auto blend ambient exposure. Cool. And we're going to go ahead and make this orange. Now what we want to do is go back and select all of these layers and move them into this group. So what we need to do is hold down option and the left bracket key that will allow you to go to the backwards layer and hold down shift alter option left bracket key and then uh, click on the left bracket key twice. That'll go back two spaces and we will select all three of the layers that we need into to go into this group. Now what we can do is just move the group into the ambient exposure group. And we can do that very easily. Hold down command and right bracket key. That'll move the layers into the group. So now what we can do is move, I'm sorry, we need to select our group layer and we can do that very easily. Just hit option, right bracket key, and that's going to select the forward layer. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to blend this automatically. And we're going to do that with color range. So let's go ahead and go to select color range. And we're going to make this into, I find the easiest way is to go with highlights and just invert it. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that our, basically we're making a basic luminosity mask. And we're gonna invert it by taking this box and we're gonna take this so that the fuzziness is now affecting more of the image. So I think that's gonna look pretty good. So let's go with like 45. And now let's go ahead and click OK. And now we have all these marching ants. We don't want to apply this mask or this selection to a mask because it's too specific. What I mean by that is that the marching ants indicate that there is a very complex luminosity mask that's being displayed here. We want to make this more simplified so it's easier to edit in the future. So let's go ahead and go to select, modify, and we're going to feather this by about 400 pixels. We want to make it really smooth. So it's almost like as if you were painting it yourself with a very uh, soft edge brush. So we're going to go with a feather radius of 400 pixels. Uh, don't apply the effect to canvas bounds because if you do, it's just going to make it look really weird. It's, it's almost going to be like it's going to fade into this and make it like a vignette. It's really weird, but just hit OK. That's smoothing out our action, making smoothing out our action. That's smoothing out our, what do you call this thing? Selection, it's smoothing out our selection. And we want to apply that to our group. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and apply the add layer mask to the group. And there we go. We've made an action that now basically blends your ambient exposure with your flash exposure and it does it pretty well but we want to go ahead and go a little bit further so we're going to go ahead and make sure at the end of this action that it selects the brush tool 
So let's go ahead and hit V. That's going to select the move tool and then go ahead and hit B and that's going to select the brush tool. Now, if you're, if you're not on the, br uh, the brush tool to begin with, you don't need to press V and then B again. It's just making sure that the brush tool gets selected. So let's go ahead and make sure our swatches are defaulted. Click D on the keyboard. That will reset the swatches. And that, and judging by, not judging by, um, based on what you're trying to do, you can make the, uh, the, the foreground swatch uh, either white or black by just hitting X on the keyboard. That'll exchange the swatches, but we don't need that. So let's go ahead and stop the action and throw that in the bin, click record. And we are going to, actually, I think we're ready. Yeah, we're ready. So let's go ahead and hit stop. I want to make this color range a little bit more customizable. So let's go ahead and click on the layer before color range. And we're going to add a prompt. So we're going to go ahead and insert stop. And we're going to make a message. So we're going to call this objective adjust the fuzzy fizziness, the fuzziness slider to, I don't know, to like adjust the fuzziness. This is always the hardest part for me is just making the prompt. So adjust the fuzziness slider to... I'm just going to say adjust the fuzziness slider because I can't think of anything right now. And we want to make sure that it, once we hit OK, it continues on to the color range option or dialog box. So let's go ahead and press continue. And it's going to say adjust the fuzziness slider, click OK. And when you play this, it's going to pop up this Photoshop uh, dialog that says objective adjust the fuzziness slider. And it's going to hit continue and, and play the, uh, the, the action. Let's go ahead and hit stop. And I want the color range dialog box to show up. So see this square right here? Click that. That's going to make sure that your dialog box comes up. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. And we're going to, we're going to play the action. So let's go ahead and delete all these layers and turn on this ambient layer. So now we can just hit function shift command F1. That's going to display our prompt. Go ahead and hit continue. We're gonna, we're gonna adjust the fuzziness. So I want a little bit more ambient. So I'm gonna go with like 35. Click OK. And now our action has blended our two exposures. So it's pretty cool. So now what we can do is make some adjustments. So, or not make some adjustments, we can just test this action out. So I wanna go to the ambient exposure color layer and just brush in a little bit of the ambient color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Go to flow 100 and make sure that my opacity is at 20. And I'm going to brush in this area because I like the warmth that's going on here. Just like so. Don't like this to be that cool. That looks pretty good. Cool. So now that's brushed in on that mask. Hold down Alt get back into your regular visibility. Now we can go to our ambient repair layer and we can adjust that. So what I was talking about earlier was that we can go to the brush tool and sample an area around the, uh, the area that's a little bit kind of miscolored. Select that. That's going to set your foreground swatch to whatever that color is. And you need to make sure that you're on your thumbnail of your layer instead of your layer mask. Because if you do your layer mask and select, no matter what, it's just gonna select whatever the layer mask color is. 
So let's go back to that sample and area. And oh, you see what we did here? We left it in normal. So let's go ahead and go back. And we are going to locate, oh, see right here, make layer. That's where we were to make our ambient repair layer. And you can see ambient repair layer. We need to, let's see, we have make, which makes our uh, layer mask, select RGB. And we need to make this so it goes to color. So let's go ahead and select RGB channel. I need to, we need to go to normal and select color. Now then, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and close this, select an area, and we're gonna paint in just that color. It's real subtle, but I really want to get subtle results here. You can go um, super crazy with this, but I prefer not to. So that looks pretty good. And I also want to go a little bit right here. Just to kind of neutralize that area. Perfect. So that is our ambient layer turned on and off or our ambient repair layer turned on and off. Really cool. Oh, I also need to do this area right here. So I'm going to select this right here. I'm just holding down option and that makes your eyedropper tool appear. And we're just going to make a selection here and you can see that by that ring is what our foreground color is going to be. So I'm going to go down to about right here. And I'm going to just brush in that color. And I think this is kind of annoying. So let's go ahead and hit uh, select this area and just brush in that. Cool. So that looks pretty damn good. I'm going to throw in another action for you guys because I often do this to where I will uh, basically uh, what is it I will make a new layer convert it to a smart object and apply my camera raw filter adjustment to it just so I don't have to do it in Lightroom so we're gonna go ahead and make a new action so we're gonna call this cam camera raw filter adjustments Okay, so we're going to go function key F2, shift, and then command. And then we're going to call this orange. Record. And we want to make a new group. So we need to stock the action. So, sorry. We need to make a new merged layer, I should say. So we're going to select our topmost layer. And now we can hit record. So let's go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut to merge our layers together. And that's shift option command E. That's going to make a stamp visible layer on top of all your other layers. We're going to call this camera raw filter adjustments. Hit enter. We're going to right click. We're going to convert it to a smart object so it's easily adjustable once uh, we're finished and that can take a little bit of time and we're going to go ahead and go to filter camera raw filter and we are going to make some adjustments so i think there's not enough contrast in this image so i'm going to boost the contrast to about 40 and then i'm going to hold down alt make sure our highlights are not clipping Go to our shadows, make sure our shadows aren't clipping. Hold down Alt on white and make sure we have a little bit of specs here. And go to blacks and make sure that we have a little bit here as well. Just like so. And I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. And I'm going to add in a little bit of vibrance. Maybe 10 in the vibrance. 
Yeah, 10 of the vibrance. So let's go ahead and go to our sharpening. I always add a little bit of sharpening just to make the image a little bit more, more uh, sharp. Because <laughs> if you look at it before, it's not that sharp. So I'm gonna add like 25. Make sure we go to our masking. And because we don't need it everywhere. Let's go to our masking and hit option. That's gonna bring up this mask that you can see. And I'm gonna go with, I only need the edges, so I'm gonna go with like 65. And now we're gonna do a little bit of noise reduction. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can just hold down option to get a black and white view if the color is distracting you. And we're gonna bring in quite a bit of noise reduction, so about 45. And we're gonna go ahead and hit zero. Command zero will zoom you out all the way. Um, let's see, hue, saturation, luminance. I don't think we need to do anything here. Uh, no, 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 no need to do anything. Uh, distortion, no. Grain, vignetting, nah. Let's call that, let's call that done. Um, I don't like to do my transform tools at all during this step. Um, so let's go ahead and commit the changes. That just gives it a little bit more punch. And we're going to make sure our action is set to orange. I'm sorry, our layer is set to orange. So I right click and just make this a orange label. And now we're going to stop the action. Go to our convert to smart object layer. And make sure I guess we can't do that because it's already, oh, I'm sorry. We need to go to camera raw filter and make sure the dialog box is selected. So it pops up the dialog. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and press play, shift, um, sorry, function, function, shift, command, F2. God damn it, get out of here. There we go, it's gonna make it into a smart object and it's going to open up the dialog box with all of our adjustments pre-applied. So that's pretty cool. So we can always adjust this. Let's say the highlights are too much or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. Click OK. And now we have a finished image. And I'm gonna provide all these um, these actions in the description if you want to uh, fiddle with them. So how do we go ahead and export those actions just in case we need to kind of move them to a new computer or we need to just save them as like archives or whatever. We're going to go ahead and go to our action set. We can't do this for individual actions, which is kind of kind of lame, but I understand it. So we're going to go making Photoshop action set. We're going to go to this hamburger button and we are going to save actions. Now, it's going to say, would you like to access your contacts? I don't care. And that calendar. Okay. We don't want to save it into our actions um, preset folder. We're going to go ahead and just call this uh, making Photoshop action set. We're going to call this, I don't know. I usually give it a date. So it's what? The 10th? 10 April 2019. And we're going to save it into actions and save. So now if we go to our finder and we go to downloads, actions and double click, we can import our actions into there. And now we can just drop those back out. So this is pretty cool. If you ever wanted to make an action, make it complex, but also kind of simple, this is how you do it. If you guys have any co comments, questions, concerns, advice, or you want to see a particular action made, just let me know and I can just pop a video out and, uh, and do that. So that is pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you really enjoy my content, click on the subscribe button and hit that bell right next to it. So you can get notifications every time I upload a video. So that's pretty much it. Take care, guys.